Good evening, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Friday, December 19th, 2014, around 8.20 p.m. It's dark out and it's chilly, and it's about 30 degrees, and temperature's going to be going down to 28 or so. Only 13 more days into Antenna TV comes to Boston on WBIN 50.2. It's actually going to be WBIN Classics Power by Antenna TV. But it's Antenna TV, my friends. And that's about it. My third and final video blog subject of the night is about one of the most famous professional wrestlers of all time, a heel for all of his career, Ravishing Rick Rude. Rick Rude was one of the most famous heels in professional wrestling history. He's famous for being the WWE IC champion in 1989 and holding the US title in WCW for 14 months. Ravishing Rick Rude was born in Robbinsdale, Minnesota. And his real name was Richard Rude, spelled R-O-O-D. Rick grew up in Min Robbinsdale, Minnesota, and went to high school at Robbinsdale, Minnesota. And his classmates were lots of professional wrestlers like Nikita Koloff, Kurt Henning, John Nord, Mike, Mike World Warrior Hawk, Brady Boone, and, and Tom Zink. Um, after high school, Ravishing um, Rick Rude was became an arm wrestling, did the arm wrestling and became an arm wrestling champion. And then he trained for a career in the world of professional wrestling by famous pro wrestling teacher and trainer, Eddie Sharkey. Eddie Sharkey's not related to Dr. Sharkey, my friends. Not to my knowledge, and then Rick Rude started his professional wrestling career in 1982. He was a preliminary wrestler, a jobber, in several wrestling territories like Mid-Atlantic, Georgia Championship Wrestling, in Western Canada, and a few others. Rick Rude's first break in professional wrestling came in 1984 when he wrestled in the CWA in the Memphis area, and he got the name Ravishing Rick Rude. He was part of Jimmy Hart's first family, and he won the Southern Heavyweight Championship in the CWA many times. He feuded with Jerry the King Lala, Tommy Wildfire Legend, Austin Idol, among others, in the CW CWA. The next year, Rick Rude went to um, Florida and Championship Wrestling from Florida, while he and he got a manager. Percy Pringle, who became Paul Bearer in WWE. He feuded with B. Brian Brett Blair over the Southern Heavyweight title in um, Championship Wrestling from Florida. He was the CWF um, Southern Champion a couple of times. Then he teamed with Jesse Barr, who, be who was Jimmy Jack Funk in the WWE. And they were Florida Tag Team Champions for a couple of times. Ravishing Recruit also feuded with Wahoo McDaniels. And they had a long-running feud in Championship Wrestling from Florida. He stayed in CWF, Championship Wrestling from Florida, for a few months. Until late 1985 when him and Percy Pringle went to World Class Championship Wrestling in Texas, Dallas, Texas. And... Um, Ravishing Rick Rude stayed there for about a year, and he feuded with Chris Adams and Kevin Von Erich and Bruiser Brody. Rick Rude was the world-class championship wrestling, world championship champion for about 10 months or so. And then he fired Percy Pringle, and he got a new valet, Raven, who was actually, in real life, Rick Rude's sister, Nancy. And... In the fall of 1986, Ravishing Rick Rude moved to Jim Crockett Promotions, and he was managed by Mr. One Paul Jones, and he's, he continued his feud with Wahoo McDaniels, but he then eventually formed the tag team with the agent Bill Manny Fernandez, and they beat the Rock and Roll Express in December of 1986 to become the NWA World Tag Team Championships. Rude and Fernandez held 
held the NWA World Tag Team Championships for about six months until Ravishing Rick Rude left Jim Crockett Promotions suddenly in May of 1987. The, the storyline says he was injured by the Rock and Roll Express, but actually his contract was up and he went up north to the WWE. And when he went to the WWE, he hired Bobby the Brain Heenan as his manager, and then he became, he his gimmick changed, he became like a kind of a sexy man who kind of came out to strip the music, and he would always say to the crowd when he went into the ring, he would say this, would I like, cut the music, would I like to have now, is for all you fat. Out of shape, Bellarica bullies keep the noise down while I take off my robe and show the ladies what a sexy man is supposed to look like. Hit the music, Ravishing Rick Rude would do that a lot, and during the TV matches, during the when he had when he wrestled the preliminary wrestlers' jobbers after the match, he would he would take out one of the ladies in the crowd and. He would give him a rude awakening, a kiss. And Rick Rude's famous finishing maneuver was a rude awakening as well. It was a, a reverse neck breaker. Rick Rude feuded with Paul Mr. Wonderful Orndorff for a while in 1980, late 1987 when Mr. Wonderful fired Bobby the Brain Heena as manager and hired Oliver Hump. I think, but that didn't last too long because Mr. Wonderful left the WWE at the beginning of 1988, and then Ravishing Rick Rude started a feud with Jake the Snake Roberts. A feud started at WrestleMania 4 in the WWE title tournament, where they went to a 15 minute time limit draw. A few weeks later, on an episode of Superstars of Wrestling, Ravishing Rick Rude um, picked out a lady in the crowd, but she refused to do the Rude Awakening, and then She's the lady was saying that that her, she was married to a professional wrestler and stuff, and he and he was laughing at that. And finally, she said, "I'm married to Jake the Snake Roberts." It was Jake the Snake Roberts' real life wife at the time, Sheld. And then Jake the Snake comes out of the out of the locker room, and him him and Ravishing Rick Rude fight, and a lot of the preliminary wrestlers try to break it up, plus the suits the agents. The producers, what they call them now, and that started a long-running feud with Jake the Snake Roberts and Ravishing Rick Rude at house shows all over, the, all over the United States and in Canada. And during this time, Ravishing Rick Rude was wearing tights with shallow Roberts likeness, and it was amazing. And eventually, like Jake the Snake Roberts took off the the tights one time on an episode of Super Stars of Wrestling and they had a sense to serve it because they thought he was really stripped down nude and and exposed himself but actually they did that because he, he was actually wearing a G-string and this feud with um, Jake the Snake and Ravishing with Glute ended in late 1988 at, a, at an episode of Saturday Night's main, main event when show Robert slapped Jake I mean, um, ravishing Rick Rude and stuff, and and at Survivor Series 1988, Jake the Snake pinned Ravishing Rick Rude with the DDT. But Ravishing Rick Rude moved on to bigger and better things. He feuded with the Ultimate Warrior over the Intercontinental Title. They feud started when they had a pose down at Royal Rumble 1989, and the and feud pose down first. A crowd was booing, and then the Warrior pose. Everybody was cheering the Warriors and Rude and Bobby the Brain Heenan attacked the Warrior. And then this set up a match at WrestleMania 5 for the Intercontinental title, which the Warrior was champion at that time against Ravishing Rick Rude. Rude won the match by Bobby the Brain Heenan granny grabbing the Warrior's foot and pinning him 1, 2, 3. Ravishing Rick Rude wins his first major title, the IC Championship, and Rude was champion for about four and a half months until SummerSlam 1989 when Warrior won the Intercontinental title back and interference from Rowdy Rowdy Piper, Rowdy Rowdy Piper uh, distracted on um, Ravishing Rick Rude and that led into the Piper Rude feud and this started this started 
to escalate on an episode of Brother Love when he when Piper was being interviewed with Brother Love and he was mocking Brother Love and stuff like that. He was going to put mouthwash in Brother Love, but Ravishing Lacrude attacked Piper and then he put the mouthwash on him and then went crazy. They had the suits come out and Piper was attacking the suits. This led to a series of matches at house shows and culminating in steel cage matches in Madison Square Garden and stuff like that. And that feud ended. And in 1990, Rick Rude got a haircut. He cut off his long hair to have it short. And by, again, he feuded with the Ultimate Warrior. But this time, the Warrior won the WWE Championship. And this was a feud between the the Warrior, the Ultimate Warrior and Ravishing Rick Rude, they had a feud over the spring and summer of 1990, but this was a disaster for WWE box offices, plummeted because they saw this feud before a year earlier. Why did they have to rehash it? This was one of the reasons why Floyd Warrior flopped as a champion. This feud culminated at SummerSlam 1990 in a steel cage match between Warrior and Ravishing Rick Rude. Warrior won the match and Rick Rude lost. And then Rick Rude was slated to go into a feud with the Big Boss Man. And this feud started on an episode of Wrestling Challenge when Rude's manager, Bobby the Brain Heenan, was handcuffed to the railing by, by, by the Boss Man. And then at the end of the show, um, Rick, Rick Rude came out and and Vince McMahon was entering Rick Rude, and Rude was saying, get the key, McMahon, get the key, and Rick Rude swore on television, and then a few weeks later on uh, Brother Love's show, Ravishing Rick Rude made remarks about the big boss man's mother, and then a week later, WWE President Jack Tunney suspended Ravishing Rick Rude from the WWE indefinitely, but in real, in real life, Rick Rude was pissed off because he got a pad payday for SummerSlam 90. Plus, a, supposedly he had an injury, but he left the WWE, but he could not go to WCW because he had a year no compete cause to go to WCW. So during that year, he wrestled in Japan, some independent shows, including on IW. CCW, International World Class Championship Wrestling. He had a match with the Honky Tonk Man to decide who was the greatest intercontinental champion. And Ravishing Rick Rude won. He was the de facto face in that match. Then, he in October 1991, Rick Rude jumps to WCW and he comes in as the WCW Halloween Phantom. And it was obvious it was Ravishing Rick Rude because he used Rick Rude's moves later on, on that was on Halloween Havoc, later on in that night, Polly Dangerously and Medusa revealed that Ravishing Rick Rude was a Halloween Phantom and then he was the leader of the Dangerous Alliance. A month later, Ravishing Rick Rude beat Sting at the Class of Champions to win the WCW United States Championship. And for the next 14 months, Ravishing Rick Rude was the U.S. champion, and he was the leader of the Dangerous Alliance with policy Jansley as a manager and Medusa as a, as like the valet and plus in the Dangerous Alliance. It was stunning Steve Austin, Bobby Eaton, Larry Sabisco, and Arn Anderson. It was like the kind of the updated version of Four Horsemen, and this is this. The, this was one where Ravishing Rick Rude has his, had his best work as a performer. He had feuds with Stain, Nikita Koloff, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Masahiro Chono over the NWA World Championship. Masahiro Chono beat Ravishing Rick Rude for the, for the vacant NWA World title in Japan in August of 1992. They had some classic matches in Japan and in the United States. And Rick Rude was slated to win the WCW World Title at Star K92 against Ron Simmons, but he suffered an injury to his neck and arm. He was out for a few months. He got stripped of the U.S. title. The U.S. title eventually went to Dustin Rhodes, and then Ravishing Rick Rude came back, and then he feuded with Dustin Rhodes. They had a controversial match on a television on a TV taping where both wrestlers were pinned. 
each other, but both of them got their shoulders up. Rick Flute stole the um, WCW US title, but the, eventually the title was vacant. They had several classic matches, like an Iron Man match at Beach Blast 93, which th didn't decide the US title because it was a tie. Both wrestlers had no pinfalls again, so that they had to continue on this, the title being vacant. Eventually, Dustin Rhodes regains the title, and then Rick Rude goes after Rick Flip, Nature Boy Rick Flip for the U for the NWA World Title, but but WCW did not inform the NWA that they were going to give the NWA World Title to Ravishing Rick Rude, and the NWA drops drops out of WCW in nineteen ninety in September nineteen ninety three. So that belt was renamed the Gold Belt. Ravishing Rick Rude beats Ric Flair for it at Fall Brawl 1993. They have a feud over it for several months. Eventually, it becomes the International WCW International World Title. And Rick Rude feuds with such wrestlers as Davey Boy Smith, the boss, who was the big boss man, and Sting over it. And, and a couple of Japanese wrestlers, they, they continue to have a feud with Sting and Ravishing Rick Rude. In April of 1994, was Sting wins the international title WCW at Spring Stampede. Rick Rude was supposed to have a feud with Fader, which um, which Rude was going to turn face. But during a match in Japan against Sting, Rick Rude suffers a neck injury, career career ending. Rick Rude's wrestling career is over for the next couple of years. He was out of the sport of wrestling. Completely, he was collecting Lloyds of London. He came back in 1997 to ECW as a mask, under a mask that sounded like Rick Rude. He was stalking Shane Douglas and Francine. It was a mask. Eventually, the mask was taken off, of, and it was refused to be Rick Rude, but there was another mask wrestler who was Brian Lee, who was part of um, Shane Douglas's triple threat at the first ECW paid for view. And then Rick Rude becomes Joey Styles' color man on ECW broadcast on television for a few months. Rick Rude was not a good broadcaster, and eventually he became heel again when he attacked Tommy Dreamer and Sandman in a six-man tag, supposedly against Rob Van Dam, Sabu, and Jerry the King Lala at an ECW house show at the ECW Arena in July of 1997. Then he becomes a bodyguard to the Triple Threat. Shane Douglas, Chris Candino, and Bam Bam Bigelow. Then he starts a working agreement with WWE when he's the bodyguard to DX, Shawn Michaels, Triple H in China. He does go to ECW and WWE for a few months, but the Montreal screw job in November 1997 gets Rick Rude pissed. He was working without a contract with the WWE. He gets his fearless to WCW, and then on November 17th, 1997, Rick Roots, the only guy to appear on WCW Nitro and WWE Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw was taped six days earlier, and Rick Root had a beard, but when he came on Nitro, which was live, he was clean-shaven, and he blasted the WWE saying he got out of the Titanic and stuff like that. And then Rick Root, for the rest of his wrestling career was basically did nothing to star. He was just a bodyguard for an NWO type. They had too many bodyguards. He didn't like the direction where he was going in WCW. He was paired off with Kurt Henning as his manager. And he was taken off of TV in late 1998. There was rumors he was suffering from cancer, but he had a recurring medical condition. And sadly, in April, 20th, 1999, Rick Rude passed away at the age of 40. Sad to see one of pro wrestling's legends pass away. And that's about it on that Facebook friends and YouTube followers. Tomorrow, three more video blogs. I'll see you later. I'm running short. Bye.